They say a picture uh, says a thousand words or 10,000 words or some number of words, a great number. This picture tells us what we all knew and expected. Rafa won the French Open. What's new, right? He does it so much we can't even fully appreciate how amazing it is. This picture tells you everything you need to know about the scoreline and how the match went down. This is, if you don't know, this is Dominic Team's friends, family, coaches. This is team theme. Team. Sorry. And <laughs> clearly, uh, I mean, look at the score below, but I think their faces tell us what the match was really like better than that score where team winning one set really is kind of misleading for how uncompetitive this whole match felt. And this picture, finally, this tells you the real story here. Rafa Nadal, after all he's been through the last couple of years, and especially this year, the crushing defeat to Djokovic, uh, the injury problems, the, the not very good results for him at least on all of the clay tournaments he played before coming to Roland Garros. This picture shows, after Rafa finally wins, breaks down and cries because even he... Everyone questioned him this year if he would be able to do it. Would this be the year he finally doesn't win it? Even Rafa wondered if this was the year, and he got his answer, baby. He won it. La duodecima. Welcome to Coffee Break Tennis, the fastest growing tennis talk show in El Mundo. I am your host, Matt Bradshaw, the tennis host with the class and the tennis IQ of Roger Federer, the determination and grit of Rafa Nadal, the honesty and bluntness of a Dominic team forehand, and the love for life, the passion of the great lover Fabio Fonini. All that rolled up into one man for one show, Coffee Break Tennis. I've got my coffee with me today. There you go, confirmation received. Uh, welcome to the show. It is a podcast today because uh, actually I have a lot of fun doing podcasts, but you, you want to know really what, why we're doing a podcast? I shaved. I was sick of the beard. I shaved it off. I have uh, very sensitive skin, almost as sensitive as Roger Federer's, maybe more so. And uh, last time I shaved and then directly did a show and I shaved in a hurry too, <laughs> which is always a bad idea. Somebody commented below, Matt, it looks like you got in a fight with a razor. So uh, yeah, not going to do that again. Uh this match was everything I expected. I was going to do a podcast last night, but I was just so worn out from the two weeks of covering the French Open that I said, you know what, I'm just going to go to bed early and wake up and really watch this match. But one thing I did before I went to bed last night was watch last year's final, which was, of course, Rafa beating Dominic Team in three sets. And the similarities are kind of stunning to me. I mean, it shouldn't be. It's the same players playing at the same place one year later. But, you know, that one set, team wins, you would think it was more competitive, but was it? Was team that much closer? I did think team was better. Is Rafa better? Or is Rafa just more deliberate? Does Rafa just know what he's trying to do better than ever, and he gets right to it faster than ever? Comment below. Comment below if you uh, think that. My first uh, big takeaway from watching the match last night is the first sets, and the first set is so important. Between these two guys... Every time they've played, only one time has the winner of the first set lost the match. That was last year at, you guessed it, the U.S. Open. Rafa drops the first set in stunning fashion and eventually wears down Dominic Team and wins the match. So the first set was ultra important. And Dominic Team had a pretty good first set, but it was almost exactly like last year's first set. Uh, last year... Dominic Team is serving at 4-5 to stay alive, and Rafa breaks him after holding easily because he wins 9 of the last 10 points. So almost 10 in a row. It's very competitive, and then when they get to 4-all, or I'm sorry, when they, yeah, when they get to 4-all, Rafa holds serve like it's nothing, and then breaks like it's nothing, winning 9 of the final 10 points of the first set. This time around, Dominic Team is serving 3-4, and it's been very competitive, the first set, looking like, hey, this could be a match. I woke up watching this, and I'm thinking, this could be pretty competitive. Maybe more so than I thought going into this match, because I felt like Rafa was going to win in three again. And Dominic, serving 3-4, gets broken, and Rafa holds to, to win the set 6-3. And guess what? 
Rafa wins nine of the last 12 points this time. So there you go. Dominic team, just a little bit better. <laughs> Instead of getting one of the final 10 points of the first set, he gets three. And he gets a couple French baguettes for his trouble. Thank you. Thank you for the French baguettes, Rafa. Now the second set, and uh, oh, I have some uh, some data here. Let's find the data. Before we do that, let's look at serving location because I want you to understand Rafa plays Dominic Team just like he's playing Federer. And Dominic Team to beat Rafa needs to play like he's Federer. Dominic Team did not stock the baseline the way he should have. And when he did, we saw him hurt Rafa. And he did it the most in the second set. He also just refused to lose in the second set. And ultimately, I think he ran out of all of his energy more on energy in a little bit because many of us said many people said Dominic Team, he's the fittest guy on tour he'll be fine he won't be tired and I said "Eh, yeah he'll be tired only one man has uh, won after going through ridiculous stuff and being much more tired than the opponent and that is Rafa Nadal in 2009 at the Australian Open how the heck is Rafa gonna lose the team with all this extra time to rest and prepare and all the extra energy how is the original marathon man going to get beat by this new marathon man, Dominic Team? God bless him. He put in a good effort. Let's look at the service locations, just so you can see. So here is Rafa serving at Federer. Keep in mind, it's three sets instead of four. And a 7-5 set, extra games. So there was more serves hit against Dominic Team. Anyways, look, 19 to the backhand on the ad court. And Rafa actually tried to jam up Federer a lot, tried to go at the body more than maybe we would have guessed. In the deuce court, 14 down the tee to the Federer backhand, 14 at the body, and only five and six out wide to the forehand on both sides. Fast forward to today, heavier traffic going to the Dominic team backhand, 23 out wide sliders in the ad court, 20 down the line to the Dominic team backhand, which uh, Rafa was very effective with the serve. Because every time either Dominic Team hits a backhand and Rafa can then just start hitting heavy forehands deep and high into the backhand corner and trap Dominic Team over there, which is what he always does to Federer, just did a couple days ago. Or Dominic Team falls way back, or he already is back. He, he changed up the service lo- uh, return position a little bit, but uh, I'll put, put this on the screen. This was, I believe, after the first set was over, this data here. And uh, clearly, you can see Dominic Team way back for Rafa. I felt like Dominic Team did a better job trying to stick to the baseline last year than he did this year. But when when Rafa hits that serve up the tee in the deuce court, Dominic Team has to fall way back to run around it and hit a forehand. And to Rafa, it doesn't matter. You hit a backhand, I'm going to get you in the forehand to backhand pattern that I'm always going to win nine times out of ten. Or... You surrender so much court position to me so you can run around and hit a a little forehand, which is not going to really do much to me, and I'm going to trap you back there and not give you a chance to come up and dictate play. If you watch Dominic Team throughout the tournament, he plays a lot like Rafa. You know, Federer said in his press conference, there's no one like Rafa. It's incredible the way he bounces back and forth from deep into court to right on top of the baseline. Effortlessly, he's crushing the ball from both positions. Dominic Team has been doing that, but he hasn't done it as well as Rafa. He Essentially, this match, he tried to out-Rafa Rafa. Rafa. Uh, anyway, so Rafa directed tons of traffic to the Dominic Team backhand, and we got to see lots of that stuff. Uh, let me see this here. So you can see Rafa, I love, this is his return hit point. He's way back too, but Rafa always does this, and Rafa a lot better about hitting a ball and getting up on the baseline and crunching you. I love those shots way out to the right. And you know Rafa's hitting like forehands over there, which is insane that far off the court. But, you know, Rafa's ball is so high and heavy and deep that it gives him a little time to recover. Because that thing is bouncing up, and Dominic Team has to hang back and let it fall back down a little bit so he can hit it at a comfortable height. And then you see Dominic Team 86% of the time. I think this is right after the first set, all this. Way back there. He tried to out Rafa Rafa, and I, I thought it, it was a bad idea. One thing that was better than last year, the net points won. Dominic Team picked good moments to come up to the net last year, but he missed a lot of volleys. This year, 
same deal, and he, he executed perfectly. If I have that in editing, we'll show you against Djokovic. Dominic Thien always came to net when he should and took care of business. Did it again, 12 out of 15, that's 80%. Rafa a little better, 85% with 23 out of 27. Uh, they, they play very similar. It wasn't that long ago, some years now, where Rafa started making life easier on himself and coming to net when the opportunity was there to end the point right away so you don't have to put more wear and tear on the body. And it's really nice to see Dominic Team doing it so well, especially on clay, where you're slipping and sliding and losing. It's hard to change direction, so you can really finish someone with a well-placed volley. It's so funny. I was just thinking about the way the points have been playing out, and I turned my head, and the TV is on behind me muted, and they're replaying the match. They're in the first set at 3-all. This is where everyone felt like maybe Dominic Team could actually do it or at least make this a very competitive match where we're not sure who's going to win. Three all in the first set, Rafa's serving, and I was about to talk about how these points play out most of the time. It's the Federer treatment from Rafa. That's the biggest difference. I've been saying Dominic Team he plays a lot like Rafa, at least the way he tries the, the containment strategy of, I'm going to stay back, your best shots, I'm going to get to all of them because I'm so far back, and I'm so athletic and fast and strong. I'm not going to get tired. I'm one of the fittest guys on tour. Everything you hit, your best stuff, it's coming back. It's coming back heavy. I'm going to crush the ball. And when you screw up, I'll come in and take an easy ball and put you away. Now, Rafa, when he comes in, it doesn't necessarily have to be an easy ball, so to speak. Right? If it's just a little shorter, Rafa could come in and put it away. But the Rafa ball is so hot to handle. Because, again, like Federer said, who do you practice with to prepare for Rafa? There's no one like the guy. Dominic Team is would be your closest thing. Dominic Team, when he tries to come into the baseline, the Rafa ball, it still has so much action. Even if you just forced Rafa in a tough position, it still has so much action and jump on it that it's hard to step in and do something. And we saw Dominic hurt Rafa by taking balls earlier in the second set. But what we saw throughout this match most of the time is when he would come step in, he would miss. He would just unforced error. And maybe not a fully unforced, maybe somewhat forced because, again, even if you back Rafa up, you put him in kind of an uncomfortable spot. He's never really uncomfortable on this court, ever. You move into the baseline, Rafa's ball, it's just a little too hot to handle, and you got to hit a great shot. Otherwise, you're running backwards again, and then all the good you just did in the rally is undone, and Dominic Team just missed. He just missed way too much. I think Roger, even though Dominic Team got a set, it feels like that was a bad move from team because he pretty much just put all of the legs he had left and then you see what happens two two French baguettes after that 6-1, 6-1. I felt like Roger Federer did a better job against Rafa Nadal actually because Roger never gave up the court positioning. I think Roger did a better job stepping in and keeping that baseline, holding your ground and trying to hurt Rafa. And if we hadn't had the windy conditions, we might have seen Roger win a set. We might have seen Roger come closer to beating Rafa than Dominic Team did today because Roger's ball, because Roger was able to stick to the baseline and handle a lot of, uh, you know, Rafa's ball, it's tough to handle. Roger was able to handle it and hit some really great shots that were able to put Rafa in tough positions, more so than Dominic Team did. The big problem was Roger just couldn't string enough of those great shots together. He couldn't get enough of them to land because of the windy conditions. It was so hard to hit those tiny targets you try to put a ball on the line or in the corner it's very hard to pull this off another thing Roger did better than Dominic team take a look at uh, Rafa's points at the net against Federer we already looked at the ones against team put them both up though so you can see the difference Nadal was way better against Dominic team at the net and that's because Rafa came to the net on his own terms like what I've been praising team for doing this year When you sense an opportunity to finish, you go in on your own terms off a great shot from you, and it's an easier time up there, whereas Roger was able to use variety better than Dominic Team today to bring Rafa in in uncomfortable positions and make him play at the net when he's not in a position to win. And again, with better conditions, we probably would have seen even more of that from Roger Federer. Like Roger said, maybe he makes more first serves, puts more power on the first serve without the windy conditions. Maybe that changes things. Maybe it makes it easier for him to hold serve. Uh, they both broke twice. Dominic Team, Roger Federer, two breaks. That's all it was. Uh, Rafa, I think, broke one more time against Team, but there was one more set, too. 
Anyways, my, my last point on this, uh, the thing I was just saying earlier about the TV. So I'm watching a typical point at three all. And it's just like how Rafa plays Roger. The high forehand from Rafa coming cross court to the backhand over and over. And here's some things that can happen. And Rafa knows it. These are the, these are the only things that are going to happen. Occasionally, Rafa will make a mistake. That's not going to happen very much. That's like a single digit percentage, maybe 5% of the time, maybe. The other thing that's going to happen, 5% of the time, team will rip a backhand up the line for a winner. Not going to happen too much because it's very hard to do anything with that Rafa ball, especially on the surface where it bounces higher. The things that are most likely to happen, team will run around backhands and hit some decent inside out forehands. He'll hit some really strong backhands, but 40% of the time he'll put in a great shot there and it won't be enough to hurt Rafa. Rafa will keep giving him the same ball no matter what team hits. The other 40% of the time, am I doing my math right? Let's say it's 10% of the time Rafa makes a mistake. 10% of the time Dominic team will come up with an amazing winner. 40% of the time Dominic team will hit a good ball that Rafa will handle easily. And the other 40% of the time Dominic team will hit the ball out. In this case, he goes back in up the line and it goes long. That three all advantage Rafa point, I believe it was in the first set. Or what's even more likely, he'll drop it short and Rafa will move up and he'll hit a winner. He's hitting your your backhand over and over. He takes the short ball the other way to your forehand corner, which is open because you've been stuck in that backhand corner for the last uh, 10 balls in a row. And it, it's, it's not going to be easy to sprint over to the open court that just gets more and more open as Rafa works you further and further off the court into that backhand corner. So there you go. Those are my main thoughts on the match. I, I want to say Dominic Team did a better job at the net. I want to say Dominic Team put in a massive effort. But you saw the disappointment on his face. You saw when Rafa said, you're going to win it one day and all that stuff during a trophy ceremony and Dominic Team is still sitting down. You saw that maybe last year, that was consoling to him to think, yeah, that's cool. Rafa wins. Rafa always wins. I did pretty good. Hey, I'm in here at the, for the, in the final for the first time. That's exciting for me, Dominic Team thinks. And he's saying, I'm going to win it soon. So maybe next year. This year, Dominic didn't look too happy with that. Not like he's thinking, oh, screw you, Rafa. I hate you. Not like that. Just like, you know, you could see it on his face. It's like, okay, Rafa, I appreciate it. But that's what you say when you win and you're over there with the trophy and I'm over here with the freaking uh, salad plate. So Dominic team's going to have to go home and make a salad and eat it off his uh, French Open runner-up salad plate. And better luck next time, Dominic. So good effort, but he, he's no way he's happy. It doesn't feel like he did much better. He got a set, but again, I just don't see how he's going to be happy with that set. This feels just as devastating and as crushing of a defeat as last year. Uh, on the lighter side... <laughs> Here's a funny picture. Take a look at this guy, the ultimate raw fan, maybe. There's a lot of big raw fans out there, as we know. Uh, this little graphic that NBC put up on TV, Rafa, the king of clay, add, a, add another to that, 12 French Open titles. 93, add another win there, 93 and 2. That's his record. He almost has 100 wins with two freaking losses, with his first win coming when he was 18 and I was 18, and we both just graduated high school. <laughs> If if Rafa did, I, I, I'm not sure. Maybe Rafa um, did traveling school or he had a tutor go with him to tournaments. I don't know how that worked for him. And below, add one, 59 clay court titles, most in the open era. Uh, here is the very happy coach, Carlos Moya, who's won this tournament one time. What a loser. Only one? Pfft. You got to get at least 10. Just kidding. Uh, he dressed up like a Jedi master. And part of the story this year is Rafa, very negative, very down, doubting himself, which is crazy to hear Rafa doing that, as he was losing those matches at Monte Carlo and Barcelona to Dominic Team. And this Jedi Master, Carlos Moya, had to take Rafa aside and use Jedi mind tricks on him to say, hey man, let's get positive again. Let's get back to being Rafa. Rafa did it. Now you see uh, the result. Uh, another picture to put things into perspective. Here's the many faces from Tennis TV's Instagram account. Many faces of Rafa over the years. Wow. That's uh, pretty amazing stuff. And one of the things I admire Rafa for the most, we all know that he's lost a little hair. But look at the pictures. This guy has take 
uh, male pattern baldness. Is that what they call it in the medical field? And he's been crushing it like he hits the tennis ball. He's been smacking it with big forehands and saying, not today, not ever. I don't think Rafa will ever go bald. I know for years people have said it's going to happen. I think Rafa's going to defeat baldness because that's just the kind of guy he is. And here's your proof. Take a look at this from the Tennis Legend account. I think it's actually from last year, whoever made this. The year 2048, 62-year-old Rafa wins his 41st Roland Garros. Wow, what a legend of the game. And final thing, a comment from our Facebook page, which I update through Instagram because I don't like Facebook. So if you ever wonder why I don't get on there and comment back to anyone, it's because Facebook is horrible. Maybe I will, though. This was a great one that came through my email, which is the only way I see Facebook things. Because I don't. I refuse to download the app. Ignacio Herrera Correa says, the face of Nicholas Masu in that picture he showed at the beginning of the show, put it back on the screen. It's priceless. <laughs> it sure is. Uh, hit the music. We're getting out of here. Thanks for listening to the podcast today. Uh, thank you to our patron saints from Patreon, the patron saints of Coffee Break Tennis. You guys really kept me on the ball. This, uh, I was real worn out and tired throughout this uh, two weeks of doing so many videos and podcasts and watching so much tennis and all the other things I have to do in my life. And uh, I was so encouraged. And I, I feel like, you know, you guys are counting on me. You guys believe in me. You signed up on the Patreon. So I want to thank you very much. Uh, if you are not a patron saint, you can always become one. Go to patreon.com forward slash coffee break tennis. And tomorrow or Tuesday, one of those days, we will do a show. Please, patron saints, go to the Patreon page, and I'm going to post a little thing asking you to give me questions or comments, thoughts on the tournament, thoughts on the upcoming Wimbledon. Whatever you think or you want to ask me a question, it's all game. Go to patreon.com forward slash coffee break tennis if you are a patron saint and drop a line, comment on my latest post there. Let us know what do you want to talk about? What do you think of what's happened? What's your question? We will do it on the next show. All the patron saints will be heard if they so choose. Thank you for listening to Coffee Break Tennis. I hope you had one heck of a tournament. We know we sure did, me and Mr. Goat. See ya!